Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. All my friends are dead. Last time the, the trial ended, Jean Grey Earl admitted to being the witch. Even though she didn't actually kill anyone, she was still sentenced to burn. And seeing that Espella declared to the court that she was truly Bizella, burn her, end these witch trials. And then... Well, Maya went rogue, leapt onto the cage, and got Espella out of there. But then Maya remained trapped in the cage, and she was sent down into the fire. Uh, uh, so she might be dead, maybe? And even though everything's resolved, Leighton is still a gold statue. And now Phoenix and Luke and Espella are on the run from the law. And I don't think they're, they're gonna, like, actually... You know, just, like, get away from everything, because, you know, when Leighton and Luke first arrived, they they had a ruckus, they ran from the, the guards, because they were like, eh, this storyteller seems weird. But, no, it's a, it's a bit different now. Phoenix and Luke have run off with the witch, well, the, the person that everyone believes is the witch Bezella, THE big witch, the witch who killed to end all this madness, so... It's... Uh, weird things are going on, so let's just hop right back in here and see what the hell's gonna happen, because I have no clue. I have no clue. So, like... Come on, I... I'm no stranger to how these stories go. I... well... I have a, a something to say here, but what's the chapter name? A Taste of Despair. It's very bitter. That's a very bitter taste. So it's like, I... I know how these stories are supposed to go. You can do fake-out deaths, but there's no way you'd kill off a main character. But here's the thing, this is a crossover game. The story could do whatever it wants, it's not canon. It doesn't have to worry about continuity at all. Who knows? Maybe Captain, um, Cap, Capcom and Level 5 Games, maybe they were like, you know what, yeah, let's, let's get a little crazy with it. Let's kill off some of their main characters and make this story real, really hurt. Captain, no, Capcom, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if Maya's dead or not. I just don't know for sure. It could go either way. This is so interesting. Also, guys, is it really a smart idea to stand right near the brightly lit torch on the main road leading from the courthouse? You don't... don't stop and talk here. Oh, brother. What do we do now? We made it out of the courtroom, but... Everyone's in an uproar. So, um... Where do we go from here? I... I'm truly, truly sorry. It's my fault that Maya... This all happened because of me. Th that's not true at all. It's not your fault, Espella. Yeah, it is. You were too selfless. It, isn't that right, Mr. Wright? Uh, um, Mr. Wright? Uh, uh, oh, oh. Luke, did you say something? Huh? Y yeah, that's right. Espella, it's not your fault. You shouldn't blame yourself. Um, Mr. Wright, I just said that. Oh, really? Mr. Wright. Well, anyway, at least we managed to save you, Espella. Yes, but because of that, now Maya... Maya believed in you. That's why she wanted to protect you. He's right. So we can't let ourselves get captured now? Luke... That settles that, then. Okay, let's get moving. 
We're bound to get caught if we stick around here any longer. But where should we go? Everyone's looking for us now. Well, I was thinking maybe we could go to Patty's shop. But the knights are certain to be waiting for us there. Oh yeah, that's true. My, you certainly managed to get yourselves into quite the predicament. What was that whoosh noise? Is that a witch? Th that voice! Oh! Oh! Hello! Inquisitor Barnum! Please wait, Inquisitor Barnum! Uh, arrest me! Lock me up! I don't care! But... These two have nothing to do with this! Take me! I'm the one you want! Something tells me he's not here for that. No way, Espella! None of us are at fault here. We're not the ones who did anything wrong. Luke? You are accomplices to the great witch Bezella, and have assisted in her escape. In a manner of speaking, you have been branded an enemy to all of Labyrinthia. There is nowhere you can hide. But... But why? Spella isn't the Great Witch. Why can't you understand that? Then I must ask you. Why do you continue to deny the clear ale allegation that this girl is Bezella? That's easy, because we believe in her. I know back in the courtroom, I said I didn't believe in Maya, but... Deep down, I believed in her. We all did, and we all still do. Luke. That's why I'm going to stand strong. I'm going to stick by Espella's side no matter what. Is that so? By the way, Sir Blue Knight. The loss of Maya Fey is... unfortunate. You really couldn't just pull it back up, huh? No, no one thought to do that? Like, it's a metal cage. I'm sure it takes a bit of time to conduct heat. Let alone turn into a broiling oven. You had time to pull it up, man. You have my deepest sympathies. Really? Your deepest sympathies? While such bedlam was indeed unexpected, we should have done something more to prevent it. Like pull the lever again? Inquisitor Barnum, I proved Maya's innocence. I admit, indeed you did. And yet... Last I saw, she was being dropped into a pit of fire. Tell me, Inquisitor, does that seem like justice to you? All witches are to be cast into the flames. That's the law of the land around here, right? But Maya wasn't a witch. Oh, he angry. How do you explain that, Inquisitor Barnum? It is truly regrettable. What occurs in the courtroom is my responsibility and mine alone. Responsibility? Whoa! Fine, then take some responsibility right now! Magic exists here, right? Well then, use some magic and bring Maya back! Cast whatever spell you need to cast, and bring her back! i never seen Phoenix so angry! This is cool. There exists no such magic. I cannot undo her death.
tis my blame to bear. If it would bring you solace, then take this sword and strike me. Huh? Just stop it. You knights are always ready to get rid of those different from yourselves. Just get out of my sight. I said go! What was that? I think I heard something coming from the main gate. Guards, come take a look at this. M Mr. Wright, those voices are getting closer. At this rate, we're... Exit through the main gate and head east through the forest. You should be able to escape along the small path there. Huh? On the outskirts of the city, you will find Rouge's Tavern. You should be safe there. Why are you helping? Go! Now! You will be caught if you stay here. And this will be all be for naught. Luke! Mr. Wright! Let's go! Y yeah right Um, Mr. Wright, are you coming? Okay, let's go. I knew there was a shred of good in Barnum. Let's press our luck by talking to him some more. Rouge's Tavern is just through that forest. Now go. It is the only haven you have right now. You should be well hidden there. Go. Quickly. Are there any puzzles nearby? Eh, hmm. Everyone leaving the courthouse has to pass through here. Let's hurry. It's so bright here, making everything else seem jet black. Any puzzles in the trees? I've got a bad feeling about this. Not that I'm scared, of course. My legs are shaking from the cold wind. I, I think someone's staring at us in the darkness. Did you hear that? I think it was just the wind, hopefully. Doesn't seem like there's any puzzles. There are houses in that direction, too. Let's go the other way, away from the town. Yeah. Well, neat. Well, you know what that means. We should head straight into town and... Oh! A, wow. Yeah, okay, I'm actually legit locked off from the other places. That makes sense, but... Fine, we'll go here. The marketplace. Wow. I didn't expect such a large collection of buildings to be so isolated in the woods. Interesting. Well, I just realized this really is an isekai city that's like circular and surrounded by a big wall. That is the most stereotypical isekai city you can get. <laughs> it looks like we made it through the forest. I can't see those knights anywhere. I think we'll be safe here for a little while. I'm sorry for all of this, Isabella. Huh? If we just headed for safety right away, we wouldn't be in this situation. Mr. Wright. I need to apologize to you too, Luke. What? You've been trying your best this whole time, just to get Espella out of here safely. It's my fault those knights are on our tail and are probably going to find us. But I wouldn't say all's lost just yet. I mean... There's got to be a way to bring Maya back. I'm sure we can find a way. Come on, Phoenix. You have to keep it together here. These two need you now more than ever. Well then, how about we make our way to the, that tavern Inquisitor Barna mentioned? Yes, that would be Rouge's Tavern. I can show you the way. Huh? Hey, Espella, you know that place? 
Oh, yes, it looks a little bit scary, so I've never been inside before, though. But I come to this side of town often to do my shopping, so I've passed it a few times. Um, I think Miss Mary's goat farm is around here as well. It, is that right? Okay, it's just this way. Let's go. Right then, let's get going, Mr. Wright. Uh, yeah. H hey, Luke. Yes? What is it? I just wanted to thank you for earlier. You really helped me out. W what do you mean? See, I get it now. I'm not the only one who's just lost someone important to them. I believe in the professor. He would never be beaten by something like magic. That witch just cast a spell on him, that's all. So, all we have to do is find a way to undo that spell, right? I see. You know, you're right, Luke. The professor will come back, I'm sure of it. That's why all I can do for now is keep moving forward. It's what any true gentleman in training would do. Yeah, I get it. Okay then, let's go. Right. What's wrong, you two? It's over this way. Hurry up. Oh, sorry about that. We're coming. The seedy alley. <laughs> and all these goods left out in the open. No one's tending to these crops. Well, Jean did say they stole a bunch, didn't they? Um... Like, before Jean was taken in by, um... Well, actually... No, who was it that was, had, like, a small frame but also stole... I forget. It was mentioned in the court. I forget. But there's also a hidden puzzle somewhere around here. Never before did house lights look so warm and welcoming. I miss Aunt Patty and Eve. What are they doing right now? It's time for dinner. You can't help feeling hungry even when you're depressed. Oh. It's a tool shop. Anything useful here? Nope. The shopkeeper's not here. Let's come back tomorrow. Or just take what you want. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm in a an RPG sort of mood. A wide assortment of edibles was laid out on the food stand. It's... it's something like a black market. People sell whatever they can get of their hands on. Guys, we need to hurry. You can come enjoy the sights later. Not if I have the, not if I have anything to say about it. We're out one hint coin and one hidden puzzle. Oh. Luke, check this out. It looks like there is a puzzle hidden here. I'm on it, Mr. Wright. Make way for the Ace Apprentice. Uh, hold on, Luke. I think I'd like to try this one. Really, Mr. Wright? Okay. Good luck. I'll be here if you need me. I don't need this child's help. I'm an intelligent person who can solve anything. Oh, it's one of these. Oh, wow. It's been a while. Their lanterns allow them to see three squares in front of them. It doesn't look like you'll be able to make it to the exit simply by outmaneuvering the guards. I think I need to push the boxes which are conspicuously lit up. Oh, so you patrol... Oh my, that window was brief. Speaking of brief windows... Yeesh. I'm pretty sure he's going to turn around, but yeah. So if I went two spaces right, one... Yeah, I'd be seen there. Hmm. I think I actually need to step into it. So he turns around on that square. Got it. So I'll try it. Please work. Woo! Barely. 
Uh, so, I can block your path, right? Is that how that works? Yeah, he doesn't mind. He doesn't care. Oh, actually... Actually... Oh, no, no. Hmm. You know what? That would be to my advantage anyway. If I push this box down and block him in, as so... Yeah, he's stuck. He's patrolling a further area. Interesting. Very interesting. So is there anything else I can do, you think? I think I have to just sneak past these guards. And they're going back and forth, so the spaces in between are safe. I want to make doubly sure here. Easy does it. I don't think they would see me to the side if I if they turn around, so... Man, I should be very careful. I won't have anywhere to move if I get behind that one tile space in the center there. So if I took two steps, one, two. So in this situation, I'd be in the center. And then I'd go... Right, down, down, left. Then I'd be safe. I think I'd have two spaces to work with. I think. I think I calculated just just so. Perfect. Exactly as I thought. I should have... Well, I'm so glad I did not press right. Patience? That is so evil. That is so evil. <laughs> that was fun. The answer here is obvious. And it's just striking me how thematically on point that is. Like, we're on the run from the guards, of course we'd want to sneak by him at night. Yeah. So there's still one hint coin, I think. Oh, found it. Good to go. Let's move. Daruj's Tavern. Well, not quite. We're in the seedy alley. Whoa! Luke, what's wrong? Uh, sorry about that, Espella. I just tripped a little, that's all. Oh, that was a woe of amazement. Huh? Is this... a potato? Let's see if we can put this back into the basket. Wouldn't want anyone else to trip over it. Crikey, this place really looks like it's seen better days. Hey, 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 what's with all this racket? Who is this? S someone's coming. Ah, uh, it's Cutter. What, what the hell voice did I give him? Eh, I think it was like a lighter voice, actually. This ain't no place for kids. Why don't you tykes run off and find somewhere else to play, eh? Oh, it's you. Huh? Oh, you're that lad from yesterday, ain't ya? Is he an acquaintance of yours, Luke? Not just an acquaintance. This lad and the bloke in the dark hat, they... They're my saviors. Them two really saved my hide yesterday. These two pulled my fat out of the fryer right when I needed it most. I guess that's one way of putting it. It's alright, Espella. This man is, really, is a really good person. Oh, that's right, lass. Old Cutter has a face you can trust. Hey, Non. Where's the bloke with the dark hat, anyway? Oh. Um, well, you see, the professor, he... Something mighty unpleasant must have happened from the looks of it. How about we take the conversation inside, eh? When you say inside, 
That wouldn't happen to be Rusha's tavern, would it? <laughs> oh, hey now, don't, didn't think you'd know about a place like that. I bet you you must be quite the heartbreaker with the lasses. That's not it at all. We just have a bit of business to take care of there, that's all. All right, all right, just pulling your leg, lad. Well, if you're looking for Rouge's Tavern, you're standing right in front of it. It's the brightest house on this road. You can't miss it. No worries, though. I'll head there with you guys. Thank you very much. He's such a nice person. So we can head in. Rouge's Tavern is just up ahead. It's the one beaming with light. Can't miss it. Fair enough. We have hint coins and a hidden puzzle to find. The lights are off. The gloom is a little unsettling. I miss the comfort of light, too. Darkness makes me uneasy. It's not the darkness you should fear. It's what lurks inside the darkness. <laughs> now, if I were a hint coin... I would be there, and I would also be, ah, uh, the potatoes. Hey, what's that there? Mr. Wright, that's a hidden puzzle. Not to worry, just leave it to me. Sure, Luke can have his turn. Whoa! The frick? You found a secret alley hidden in the town. The road here is paved with tiles etched with various symbols. The four coins in your possession will allow you to make one type of tile set disappear, allowing you to proceed walking across the alley. Use the coins to remove tiles and cross the alley. You only have four coins to use them wisely. I see. I see. Interesting. This is cool. I like this one. So if I step on the scorpion, that removes all scorpions. Uh-oh. I get, oh. There's no undo button. There is a restart button, though. And I'm not penalized for using it. So, let's see, we've got scorpions, axes, roses, snakes, coins, um, five symbols. That's five symbols, right? Yeah, I don't see any others. Now, which is the most plentiful? Actually, it might be an even spread, so I think this might be about charting a path one step at a time. Well, okay, see in the middle here? Axe, 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 axe. The only way past the axes is through here. I can go here. Oh wait, swords. Yeah, there are also swords. Maybe there's seven. So if I go through here, I would be hard blocked by the swords as well. So my question is... Can I get through here, this path up here, by only using three coins? Let's see. Oh. In order to do that, I'd have to um, get through the swords. So let's see. One, two, three, mm, no, crap, wait, I don't think I can get here using four coins. One, two... Wait, actually wait. No, I think I might be onto something here. Let's try this.
crap. Oh, I think I might be onto something. I need... one of them has to be a gold bag. I think I was onto something there, so... You know, the order I take these out, maybe... I can backtrack and then touch one of the axes. Ah, uh, now I'm stonewalled by these. Ah. Uh, this is a fun little brain teaser. Well, I think I've shown my thought process off well enough. I'll just let you know when I solve this, eh? gonna be real I got through that by lucky stumbling around As you'd expect from a gentleman in training that was way harder than I thought it would be good lord it was fun though Ugh. so we still have one more hint coin to find right Phoenix stepped on something sharp that poor man he is not having a good night. There it is. I think that's everything. I think. Let me let me just make sure real quick. Yes. Wow, it sure is lively in here. It certainly is. Even more so than I thought. It's so cheerful, and everyone seems to be having a good time. See, it ain't just the shadiest of the shady that ain't about here. Well, you do get the occasional rabble-rouser every now and then, but for the most part, everyone's here is good people. You'll find the head honcho herself over behind the counter. Why not go introduce yourselves? That would be Rouge, I expect. Neat. Let's have a look around. Oh. It's a funny dartboard. My first thought when I saw it was like the, like, a, a stage act where someone's strapped to a spinning wheel and someone throws a knife at them. Yeah. Don't you usually use darts on a dartboard? Eh, ah, what's the use? Knives as darts? It really does seem like something out of a fantasy book, doesn't it? The atmosphere in here is so different from the town square. I wonder if we'll be all right here. Did did it just sway, Mr. Wright? I sure hope this doesn't get loose and fall. Yeah, it shouldn't be doing that, I don't think. How pretty. It's not every day you see a chandelier like that around here. If Maya were here, I bet she'd be trying to jump up and take one of those candles. So, it's not just me, right? I'm pretty sure... Pretty sure the hot wax is gonna melt and... drip down. Oh. Speaking of hot wax, boy, I don't think I've ever said this story when... in any of my videos, but when I was a little kid, somewhere around like eight, um... My mother asked me to blow out a candle. And so I went over, and it had been burning quite a while. There was a pool of hot wax around the flame as as a candle goes. So I leaned in, closed my eyes, and blew. The next thing I knew, agony. My breath had splattered the hot wax right back onto my face. My entire face just covered in hot wax droplets. It was horrific. And, sure enough, because I closed my eyes, the hot wax partially landed on my eyelids. 
too. If I hadn't closed my eyes when I blew, I very well may have been blinded, or at the very least horrifically damaged my eyes permanently. I try not to think about that possibility, honestly, but... <laughs> it's crazy. Just the mere act of me not not closing my eyes could have meant that my life would be so different I wouldn't even have a YouTube channel like this where I played games, which... You know, I know it's possible for blind people to do that, but... You know, I... I I'm reading visual novels here, I kind of need my eyes for that, so... Just a little bit of a... Just a little quirk of fate, you know? Goodness me. Um... Is that an axe embedded on the ceiling? Oh, I, I drink here. This place is neat. That's, a, that's an axe on the ceiling. I can't even interact with it. No one has anything to say. It's just there. Oh, I love that. <laughs> a giant ass axe. Oh. oh crap, I forgot. How many... I think I found one here. So that's two. I think we had seven, uh, 107 coming in here, maybe. I think I'm missing one. Maybe? Wow, look at all those bottles. I wonder if that's a whole day worth of juice. Mm-hmm. Juice. It's a bit funny imagining Inquisitor Barnum sitting here with a tall glass of tomato juice, isn't it? It'd be funny just watching him try to sit in one of those chairs with that armor of his. <sighs> I think we've run out of things to do. Maybe? No, surely there's one more hint coin. I, uh, shame on me for not keeping track. Uh, well, it's just one hint coin and we have over a hundred. I'm not exactly hurting for one, but I think we're good. Ha <laughs> ha, boss lady. I come bearing customers for ya. Turn the volume down before you scare away all my other customers. Use your indoor voice, remember? Customers, you say? Now, I sorta of sprung this on ya, and I know they're just a bunch of kids, but that lad there is my savior, and the heart. So do me a favor and get the lad a juice. It's on me. Just put it on my tab. I don't care about that. Did you take a look at that girl? What the heck were you thinking? Boy, she would not be using words like heck. That lady swears. Do you have a loaf of bread for a brain or something? You fool! Huh? That girl is suspected of being the great witch Bizella. B -b 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 bizella Are you joking? I didn't know that. Now, see here, Espella is not Bizella. We were the ones that proved her innocence and cleared her of the charges. Is Phoenix lying? Is this the boss lady? The lad agrees she's not Bazella. And besides, I knew the girl was innocent from the moment I laid eyes on her. Cutter, your judgment is about as reliable as paper shoes in the rain. What I'd like to know is who told you three to come here in the first place? You know, what just occurred to me, she has the same hair color as Barnum. Is this Barnum's sister? It was Inquisitor Barnum. Oh, really now? So it was him, was it? You guys... Listen, don't say a word of this to anyone else, you hear me? It could make life very difficult for our dear Inquisitor. 
Uh, right. Got it. I don't know what he expects me to do with you guys, but fine, I'll lend you a hand. You can stay here for the night. There's an empty room you can use upstairs. We don't exactly get the cleanliest type staying here, so forgive the mess. Should be good enough to sleep in, though. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you so much. Don't get the wrong idea, kiddos. This place ain't a charity. I expect you to return the favor someday. Phew, I'm sure glad Rouge turned out to be such a nice person. Yes, Mr. Cutter and Miss Rouge are both very kind. It looks like we can, re can rest easy for now, right, Mr. Wright? Yep, and I guess we can take this time to do a little sleuthing too if we want to. But we should probably rest while we can. Tomorrow is going to be a pretty hectic day. Now that's an idea I can get behind. The Sculptor's Room. The sculptor's, huh? Well, let's have a little chat first. This place is where folks like me can come and be ourselves. Boss Lady is always helping out anyone that's in trouble. I know she seems a little rough at first, but I always knew she'd end up helping you a lot in the end. Everyone here really trusts Ro Rouge, didn't they? Uh, don't they? No doubt about it, lad. And, you know, a gal like that sure demands attention if you catch my drift. Uh, um, I don't really think I fully understand what you mean. I'm ten. <laughs> Gah! <laughs> Still a bit too green for that, eh, lad? Oh, would you look at the time? Best get ready for bed. Your room is upstairs. It's a bit messy, though. Hope you don't mind. Anyway, just enjoy your stay and relax. If you get sleepy, just head on upstairs. I like that he's just brandishing a potato peeler. Do you and Inquisitor Barnum know each other? Eh, <sighs> I guess you could say that. Is that right? It's just a bit surprising, I guess. I mean, Inquisitor Barnum is head of the knights, and you're... Some near-do-well tavern owner, right? Well, can't fault you for stating facts, kid. You may both be different, but I get the feeling you really trust one another. Zack is... well, different from all the other knights in Labyrinthia. That's not just on a first-name basis, that's a nickname basis. To any other knight, we're nothing more than a bunch of filthy no-good scum. We're the first ones to blame whenever a crime or anything happens out in the town. That's true. Mr. Cutter didn't do anything wrong when the professor and I gave him a hand. Yep, society judges us very harshly, you see. But Zack... He's fair. He doesn't judge anyone based on how innocent or shady they may look or what sort of job they've got. He's only interested in protecting the town with fair and sound judgment. That's why he always helps us out. Interesting. Like I thought he really is a good person. Huh? Did you say something? Uh, no, it's nothing. Well, I think that's my cue. You take it easy and rest up, okay? If Zack told you to hide out here, then I really doubt the knights will come snooping around. And even if they did come here, we sure as heck couldn't turn you over to the likes of them. That's good to know. Thank you again, Miss Rouge. You're really too kind. <laughs> For such a little guy, you sure do know how to keep a level head in a tough spot. Your friend over there, on the other hand, I haven't heard a peep from him this whole time. It's fine. I'm sure he'll be right as rain tomorrow. Hmm. Well, let's head up. Oh. Maybe that wasn't a potato peeler. Maybe that was a sculptor's chisel. This must be it. 
So this is the room Rouge was talking about, huh? Oh my, it is quite unique, isn't it? Is that a statue in the corner? How very, er, avant-garde. That statue really looks a lot like Mr. Cutter, doesn't it? Hey, I wonder if he made this himself. Not only is Mr. Cutter very nice, it seems he's quite artistic as well. I don't know if I'd call this art, per se. Hey, hey, any expression of creation by a human is art. This video you're watching is art. Not very good art, but it's art. Anyway, it's just nice to have a safe place to rest for a while. Uh-huh. We did so much running about today. I'm totally exhausted. I think we can plan out our next step in the morning. Let's try and get some rest. Right. But my hint coins... There are hint coins in that room. I need them. Maya. If only... I'd been able... To save you. It never would have come to this. Just great. I should be ready to pass out right now, but I just can't fall asleep. I'm a little thirsty. Maybe I should go grab some water. It looks like the party is over. Everyone must have gone home by now. I'll just grab some water and head back to my room. Oh, Rouge is here. Neat. Hmm. Nothing new, I think. Sounds like it's all tapped out. People here sure do love their tomato juice. Yeah, uh -huh. tomato juice. Uh-huh. Oh, a puzzle? Interesting. Oh, what's up? Can't get to sleep? Yeah. I'm absolutely beat, but I just can't keep my eyes shut. Huh. You don't say. It looks like you've got your work cut out for you cleaning up this place. Do you need a hand? Nah, it's fine. The house rule is, you make a mess, you clean it. But those dummies couldn't keep their eyes open. I'll make them clean up in the morning. Uh-huh. So, hasn't everyone gone home? I couldn't exactly let them go home in that state, so I shut them all upstairs for the night. This is both their home and shelter. I mean, don't tell me you can't hear their loud snoring from down here. And here I thought that was my stomach growling this whole time. So, you must have come down here for something, right? Oh yeah, that's right. I came down for a glass of water. Huh, all right, but you'll have to earn it first. You win at my game, and I'll get you any drink you want on the house. Did you say game? Uh, what kind of a game? Silence! Whoa, now that was totally unexpected. Um, I'm really sorry if I said something wrong. Now, don't you go getting the wrong idea. I only drew this knife to use in this puzzle I've made for you. Okay. This is interesting. Slide the red chalice to the bottom right-hand corner of the table. Use the knives to bounce the red chalice across the table. 
The direction of the slide depends on the angle of the knife. Be careful not to de deliver any green chalices, as the cups switch places when they hit each other. Oh. I just remembered about the freaking memo. Hmm. If any of the chalices slide off the table, or if the green chalice is delivered to Phoenix, I have to try again. You cannot lose any pick carrots here, so feel free to use check to your heart's content. Well, that's neat. So... Uh, what, what exactly do I... Oh, I can change these. I see, so I wanted to get out here. I can't move the knife, so... If I go from the backwards... Let's see here. Hmm... Curious. Interesting. So in order for the glass to slide out to the right here, well actually let me, yeah. If I use the, ch um, have the knife oriented this way to slide the knife out here, which, not the knife, the chalice, out this way, the only direction it could possibly be is this, because if it's like this, well, it can't slide out that way. So it must be like that. So it has to bounce down from here. So it has to bounce through this. Let's try the memo. Let's do, um, there's no red? Well, we'll do orange to represent the red. So it's slide this way. And then go out that way. So it would slide from here. But it would swap. Let's see. So if I slide, I could go... Down. No. Going from down is bad because there's nothing here to bounce it up into this. So it can't, like, swap around. So it has to bounce this way. And, um, there's nothing to bounce it to this direction, so it can't go that way, so it has to bounce this way, so it'd go, come from here. So... No, that's undo. Hold on. Let's see. So it goes here, down, cross. I'll solve the problem of the green chalices in a bit. For now, though. Mm. If it went this way... Oh, it swapped to... Ah, oh, well, I'll just keep it black then. So I went here, and could bounce this way, maybe. And could bounce up. And could go this way. If I angle this down, it could go across. Then up. Ooh. Hello? Did I just solve it? Let's see. Okay, so down, cross, up, over, swap. Oh, you need to click that. Go across. I'll check the full path. Now, I'm not accounting for the goblet in any way, but... I'm thinking if it... If the mug goes here and hits here, it'll be deposited there, and then it'll loop around and come back and slide, and it hit it, and it'll be sent that way and out. So, the green mug will move onward, then it'll swap with this, and the green mug will then go around, 
I'm pretty sure this dagger here is completely non-relevant, I think. And I can't lose Pekaret, so yeah, let's try. I'm a friggin' genius. I await your verdict. This ace attorney just aced this puzzle. If you're looking for a tougher challenge, try talking to Rouge. She's bound to have a harder puzzle sitting around somewhere. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait, but that one was easy. <laughs> Not too shabby, Tiger. Well, a promise is a promise. You can have any drink you want, no charge. Refills included, just say the word. Thank you. I think I'll take you up on that offer. You earned it, you know. Never saw anyone around these parts take down a puzzle like that so fast. <laughs> it was pure luck, trust me. If you want a puzzle expert, Luke is the one to talk to. Oh, you mean that sharp-looking kid, right? You know, for someone so young, he's got a good head on his shoulders, that one. It looks like he's been through a lot. Yeah, he sure has. He seems to be in good spirits, but deep inside he must be hurting really bad. He just lost someone very dear to him. But he's trying so hard to hide it. Then there's Aspella. She had a new accusation thrown at her and is again at risk of being burned alive. And... Maya. I can't stop thinking how her death was completely my fault. That's why I need to be stronger. But I can't. I just feel so... hopeless. I'm the only one who can protect Luke and Aspella. But I'm scared. I'm scared that what, what happened to Maya will happen again. Maya, huh? I caught wind of what happened today in the court. She seemed very important to you. I'm alright. I'm just not sure I can protect those two. More than that, I just don't want them to think I might fail them. It's kind of funny that this is the best character development Phoenix has ever got, and it's a spin-off game. Like, don't get me wrong, he was pretty interesting in Apollo Justice, but... Yeah, the, uh, he was kind of like, just, uh... Didn't really have much going on too much in the original trilogy. This is great. You want to protect them, and don't want them to think you'll fail, huh? That all sounds well and good, but you want to know what I think? I think you're just telling yourself what you want to hear. Huh? What do you mean? I think the words coming out of your mouth right now are downright selfish. Uh, hey, what are you... Have you taken a second to step back from your wallowing and think how worried they must be about you right now? So it's hopeless, huh? Do you think those kids are hopeless too? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. You want to see hopeless? That's easy. Just take a look in the mirror. Damn! How do you expect to protect those two if you can't even manage to get a hold of yourself? Uh, I... It's okay, I get it. You had some really, really rough stuff happen to you today. Unimaginably sad, emotionally trying stuff. That soft refrain of the sister's theme. That's why the first thing you need to do is just accept it. Accept it all. The sadness, the remorse, everything. Honestly, 
I don't blame you for expressing just how hard this whole situation has been on you. Who could? I... I can never forgive myself for letting this happen. I couldn't do anything. Not a single thing. I did nothing to help Maya at all. Maya... She gave her own life to save Espella. If only I'd been quicker. If only I could have done something. Maya would still be... She'd still be here by my side. It's all my fault. Well, both of them are listening. <laughs> oh, Luke, what are you doing here? Oh, Espella, what are you doing up at this time? I couldn't sleep. I thought I'd just get a glass of water. Huh? Who's that over there? Is that Miss Rouge and Mr. Wright? Uh, hey, we should head back to bed, Espella. We have an early start tomorrow, after all. Huh. You're right. Mr. Wright. Well, that was interesting. I think we can go back to bed? Yeah. Well... Interesting stuff from a lot of characters. Barnum always struck me from the very start as someone who would ultimately do the right thing. Even if it meant going against the system. And he let Bezella go. He let Phoenix, quote-unquote, Bezella and Luke go. Not only that, he told them where to find shelter. And it's probably covering for them, too, by telling his guards not to investigate this area. Barnum's good people. Yeah, even from the start, I figured that he'd come around in, the, like, at least the climax, at the very latest. And pursue the truth, not what he felt was felt was the best thing to do. To find the truth. And who knows? Barnum certainly does respect Phoenix. A lot, I would say. And I want to say that Barnum is thinking about what Phoenix says. The, the truth. I, I did notice that Barnum was quite struck when Phoenix continued on the trial to find the truth, even though he got he by all means got the goal he wanted. Maya was about to be proven innocent, and um, and Jean was about to take the fall, but even still, Phoenix pressed on to find the truth, no matter how that may change things. And Rouge here, who I'm pretty dang sure is Barnum's sister, yeah, she's cool too. Great design. Man, I... You know me, I'm an RPG fanatic. It's my favorite game genre. She seems like a cool party member. I, I want a turn-based RPG where she's the rogue character. Rouge the rogue, as it were. Um. And yeah, man, Phoenix. Good stuff from him. Like, it makes sense that he would feel so strongly and be so sad after what happened. It's kind of, it, kind of, it kind of sucks that all the best character development can only happen after tragedy, you know? But if that's how it's got to be, then by all means, I do like what how Phoenix is being handled here. I'm still not sure what the plan is, but I guess we'll settle that tomorrow. 
But uh, yeah, next time, I think we'll speak to Rouge again, solve a more difficult puzzle, head to bed and see what happens in the morning. I have no idea what the story could possibly be from here on. <sighs> like, who knows, maybe things will go really badly, Espella will be captured, and then Phoenix will have to defend her, as planned. <sighs> I still have no idea whether or not Leighton and Maya are truly dead. I just don't know. This game is called Leighton vs. Phoenix, and no rivalry whatsoever has ever happened yet, so maybe that's just a red herring. Maybe the title's a lie. Who knows? I don't know. This game has me guessing, and that's great. Ace Attorney's at its best when it completely bucks expectations, but still feels good and coherent. This is well written. I love this game so far, man. It's just great. Anyway, I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been more Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you next time. So until then, please take care. <laughs>